Oh my God, I'm glad that fish bit it like that. I am so glad that fish bit it like that. So, right now guys, I don't know if you guys saw that. Look at his fat stomach. Sorry. We got a security guard right next to us. I'm about to get kicked out. But anyways, beautiful fish. <laughs> he slammed that thing right when I was jerking it really hard. You know, not really soft, I was jerking it pretty hard, moving that bait a lot, and that triggered a reaction bite. Let's get him back in the water. Keep the camera rolling. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to another video. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this one today. I'm really excited to bring this for you. Son of a b Um, let's restart that real quick. Hey, yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to another video. I'm excited to bring you one. I cannot talk today. What is going on? Welcome to another video. So today we're doing something that I've been wanting to bring to you guys for a while now. You guys have been commenting in the comment section below. Noah, we want a drop shot video. Noah, what tips do you have for a drop shot? Noah, how to rig a drop shot. So guess what guys, that is what we're doing today. First of all, if you guys are enjoying these tip videos, be sure to leave a like on this video and also leave a comment below on what tip video you would like to see next. So I'm gonna dissect kind of what we're gonna talk about today in this video. And pretty much I'm gonna show you guys how to tie a drop shot, how I rig my drop shot, what baits I throw on a drop shot, how to go throw it in the lake and catch more fish. So that is what we're gonna be covering today. Let's go to the back of the kick and mobile and I'll show you guys how to rig up a drop shot. So first things first, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, be sure to click that subscribe button. That means a lot. Everybody who supports me on the day-to-day -day basis, thank you guys so much. So I got something a little bit tricky today. So on my spinning combos, which is what I got today, that's what I highly suggest throwing a drop shot on. You can throw it on a bait caster. We're gonna actually be throwing a drop shot out today. We're not gonna be vertically dropping on a fish. And I'm still gonna be using a spinning rod, really light tackle. This is actually a Fate Black by 13 Fishing paired with a Cree GT by 13. And if you guys notice, I actually have this on braid right there this is very thin braid this isn't nothing like 65 pound this is very very light braid around 20 pound braided line right here so we're not going to directly tie this to the drop shot this is one thing that you guys need to take in consideration when you know fishing baits like this in clear water as well you know you don't want to throw it right on braid the fish can see that and that's not going to be your best bet so what we're going to do is we're actually going to tie a fluorocarbon leader onto this braided line so first things first i'm going to push this through these eyelids and then I'm going to show you guys how to tie a double uni knot so you can put a leader on. So funny thing, I actually do not have fluorocarbon with me today, like on a spool. So I'm actually going to take some off of my bait caster. This is 10 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon. This is Invisex. Really smooth line. I've used it for years now. And that's just my all in all favorite of all time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this jerk bait off and I'm going to take a little bit of leader line and I'm going to reel it onto my spinning rod. So we need... My knife. Cut that jerk bait off. And now we're gonna tie this onto here. So you guys are probably wondering, Noah, how in the heck are you gonna tie two lines together? And this is where a uni to uni knot comes in handy. And it is very strong when you're reeling it through your eyelids. It's not too bulky and heavy, especially with this small line. And it's just the perfect fit for you know tying line together. So this is what you're gonna do. So I got my braid right here, my fluorocarbon right here. I can make a separate video on this. I'm just gonna make this very quick and simple for you guys. We're gonna line them up to one another, all right? So all you gotta do is line them up. Now I'm gonna take one end and I'm pretty much gonna tie like a standard uni. So I'm gonna grab my line. I'm looping my fluorocarbon around my hand, just like I would for a standard uni knot, which I already have a video on that. You guys can go check that out. And I'm gonna loop it around in the circle. All right, I'm gonna do this about five times. And then I'm gonna pull that tag in. And I just have it like that. Then I'm going to do the same thing on this braided end, literally the same way. This is why it's called a double uni knot, because you're technically tying two uni knots together. That's really all you're doing. Really simple like that. I can make a video on this. I know this is not easy to follow and it's not supposed to be. I can make another video where I'm you know demonstrating that if you guys like to see that. So let me know. Once we finish that right there, we have our two uni knots. We're simply gonna, not the tag in, but the line to the rods. We're gonna cinch them down together. As you can tell, I'm not holding the tag ends. They're gonna collide, just like that. You see that? There's two uni knots that are cinched down together now. And that is perfect for our old leader. And now all I gotta do is simply cut my tag ends and I'm good to go. Just like that. 
as you guys can tell it's not like a super bulky profile so that's going to go right through your eyelids perfectly and you're really not going to have too much trouble with this i promise you it's not this is what i've used for years it just works best for me and um, now all i'm going to do note that these poles are tied to one another now so i'm going to make sure that this is clicked so i can take some line off and i'm going to apply a little bit of pressure i'm going to reel about 10 to 15 foot in just like so that's all i did the steel in liner off of the reel that's an easy way to save some money too because i know you guys are all into you know budget fishing and boom we got our braid on our reel but we have a fluorocarbon leader so it gives it that finesse profile when tying on a bait like this all right so it's time to rig up now we got our fluorocarbon on i'm gonna simply just grab me a little nose hook let me explain the difference between a few hooks right here you can weedless hook your drop shot and that's very productive all right but today we're just going to be nose hooking the bait and we're just going to be using a standard little size one to size two drop shot hook right there and you're just going to nose hook the bait see we can let me show you like right here we could rig it weedless with this hook but this one we're just going to be nose hooking it and let me explain the difference so this one is going to be you know when there's obviously you're pitching this around trees and a lot of cover you really don't want to get snagged up that easy and your hook's not exposed you know your bait is dug in to the point of that hook but when we're fishing grass as well, you know, you're going to want something like that. But when we're fishing these ponds in the more of open water, I tend to just nose hook the bait. It gives it an easy, it's easier to penetrate a fish with it, one, but two, this hook is exposed. That's the perfect hook that we're going to use today. Like I said, this is a size one or size two drop shot hook. Both work very well. The trick to tying a drop shot, I'm tying a standard uni knot, is to have a bunch of tag in line. Because it's, I'll show you here in a minute, but you're not going to want to tie it like a specific, you know, little bait on your hook. You want to have a lot of tag in line. So I'm just going to tie a simple little knot. This is a uni knot. See how much tag in line I have left over? It's because that's where our weight's going to go on the bottom. It's going to keep this hook off the bottom. So all I got to do, web my line, cinch it down. And this is the most important part right here. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video today because I feel like a lot of people miss fish because of this. Once you tie your hook onto your line and you have your tag in, all right, you're not going to cut this much. You're going to want to put your weight at the bottom. This is the trick. You're gonna take your tag in and you're gonna go back. All right, see my tag in down here? You're gonna take this and go back. Your knot's already tied. You're just going right through the eyelid on top. You can see your hooks facing up and you're gonna pull this back down. All right, just like that. And you guys are probably wondering, Noah, what is this doing? Why, like, why do you do that? Why do you stick your line back through? And this is exactly why. So on a drop shot, you're not really hook setting a fish. You're just lifting up, slightly lifting up, or, or you're vertically dropping on a fish. The most important thing is to have this hook facing up. So when you lift up, it goes right into the top of his mouth. Because if the hook is faced down or sideways, your hookup ratio isn't gonna be as good. You know, if I didn't stick my line back through this hook, I promise you, the hookup ratio is gonna be horrible. But with it like this, you're gonna catch every single fish. See how your hook is faced perfectly up? That barb and the point of the hook is literally faced perfectly up so when i go to lift boom right into the fish's mouth that is the most important thing when drop shot fishing that that is probably the most important step and i'm glad i could add it into this video and if you guys are watching this far in i'm so glad because you guys are probably wondering why you know no i'm missing a lot of fish this is not that. that's probably why right there and now i'm just going to tie a simple little cylinder weight right here pop it on there Loop it around one time, boom. Got my little weight. You guys can tell my leader's not that long. It's about seven to eight inches. I really don't have too much line in between that right there. It's not like I'm fishing, you know, some super deep water. Fish aren't too finicky here. It's a pond. You know, I'm gonna stick to about that seven, eight inch range. I do like a foot leader as well, but that's, that's just what I use. Usually when I'm coming to ponds. And if we're not getting any bites, I will lengthen this even more and I'll, and I'll bring it down about, you know, two to five more inches that is what we're dealing with right now we got our hook straight up that is a drop shot fish catching machine right there you guys need to go take these tips go apply to your ponds or lakes wherever you're fishing and you will catch fish and go use that little tip about putting the line back through and you will catch i promise you 10 times more fish but let's go ahead and get us a worm and then get out to the pond where i'm going to show you guys how to rig and fish this bait so when it comes to picking out the right type of worm or minnow to put on your drop shot i use a few simple rules when coming out here so if i'm fishing clear water i'm gonna fade towards you know more of a natural color like green pumpkin watermelon red you got your like prism shads or like 
you know, like a bluish translucent look. You got your robo worms um, in like morning dawn, which are more of a pink color. And that's usually what I'd fade towards with clear water. But I'm moving over to this dirty water. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to start adding in my darker colors like June bug. June bug is a really great color. Green pumpkin's great as well. Usually watermelon red, I wouldn't use in dirty water. I'd fade towards that green pumpkin, June bug color deal. More of the darker colors for the dirty water. So today with these ponds, I'm going to whip out this pack of worms. I, it looks like I only have one more June bug worm. That's what I usually use in ponds, especially ponds that, you know, the water's not, doesn't have a lot of clarity. That's usually what I use. Now I have these that are called watermelon slice. And it's like a green pumpkin with a little bit of red on the bottom. That's great for dirty water as well. These are the two colors that we're going to be fooling with today. Probably my favorite of all time. It's probably like a water, uh, not a watermelon, uh, morning dawn. I'm telling you, killer. Little pink worm. You cannot beat that. Usually dirty and clear water, you'll catch them. But uh, that's what we're going to be experimenting with today. The only thing left to do is go out to the pond and catch some fish, baby. I don't remember if I told you guys, I do have 10 pound fluorocarbon onto that leader. I like eight pound as well, something very light. So you're going to have to check your drag. Make sure it's pretty loose. You know, we're using light tackle today, throwing a drop shot. So very important to check your drag, make sure it's pretty loose. And you're gonna give that fish a chance to, you know, tug. Going out with the worms, I think we're just gonna start off with this Junebug one. I mean, we got one left. We might as well pop them on the hook and see what we're gonna do. And let me show you how I'm rigging this thing since we just have a standard, simple, old uh, circle hook. This isn't weedless, all right? So, all I'm gonna do is see, I got my hook right there. Just through the head of the bait. You're just gonna, boom. That's all I do, right there. Simple, simple, all right? really easy that's all we're gonna do all right so it's time to catch fish boys and I'm gonna experiment with a couple different things with this drop shot I don't like to work it the same way every time I go out you know I try a few different things nice <laughs> but that being said we're gonna be casting around we're gonna be figuring out today if they want this bait really moving off the bottom if they want it dragged off the bottom if they want it you know me dead sticking this thing we're really gonna have to toy around today and figure out what these fish really want and how they're gonna commit so we can catch more fish. So always when I come to these ponds, I try to look for the cover that, you know, I'm gonna be fishing. I got a pipe in the water right here. I'm just gonna be flipping this drop shot all around it. That's so important when coming to these ponds to break it down and really figure out what you're gonna do. Find what covers in the pond, figure out whether those fish are sitting, whether they're out deep or they're on some trees up shallow, whatever it is, start fishing. So right now I'm just kind of searching, you know, I'm searching to figure out where these fish are and what they're gonna how they're gonna eat this bait today so oh oh my gosh what in the world that was did you guys just watch that that's about the stupidest thing i could do i, I kind of i feel like i gave him a little too much yeah i gave him a little too much I, that's <laughs> uh, learn from my mistakes don't all right so this is the thing with the drop shot you're not wanting to hook set too hard i'm doing it really really soft so when a fish loads up on it I'm just lifting up really. I want to show you guys this real quick. Let's see if we can get this fish to bite again. He was on there. I feel like I kind of just started to swing towards it instead of just lifting up. I got a little excited there for a second. See that fish is going to bite. I'm just simply hopping this thing. As you guys can tell by my hand motions, simply hopping it, lifting my rod up much. I'm not, you know, jerking this thing around too much. All right, well, matter of fact, I am jerking that thing a lot. <laughs> what in the world man that is all right this is awesome this is this is why i like making these tip videos because it shows you guys look at look at his lipstick right there gosh look at that oh my god i'm glad that fish bit it like that i'm so glad that fish bit it like that so right now guys i don't know if you guys saw that look at his fat stomach Sorry. we got a security guard right next to us i'm about to get kicked out but anyways beautiful fish <laughs> he slammed that thing right when i was jerking it really hard you know we're not really soft i was jerking it pretty hard moving that bait a lot and that triggered a reaction bite let's get back in the water hey, keep the camera rolling <laughs> yes sir all right so um uh, <laughs> as i was saying people yeah i got kicked out so that's okay though i can't fish that front pond i'm not allowed to fish that front pond I know I wasn't allowed to fish that front pond. I'm gonna tell you guys, don't do stuff like that. No, I'm, I'm just, when it comes to fishing, I have no limits, I'm, I'm crazy, okay? So we're gonna go fish another pond. We're a lot of fish places around here. I just can't fish that pond. Um, I've, I've been fine, that's the crazy thing. I've been fine with fishing it this whole time. It's the first time someone's actually kicked me out of that front pond. So that's fine though. Um, we got one fish, 
I did figure something out. Maybe we can take this to another pond, see if we can catch some more fish. So this video is not over, people. We're gonna continue. We're gonna catch some. Let's go. Uh, there is one thing I really wanna talk about in this video that's very important, and pretty much why I made this one, is the different retrievals with this drop shot that I kinda experiment with, depending on the conditions of the day um, and how active the fish really are. So one way that I love to work a drop shot, very clean and simple, and is gonna be a very productive way pretty much any time, whether the fish are active or the fish are very lethargic, and it's gonna work every way. And it's gonna be simply just dragging that thing like this. Lifting your rod up, just kind of dragging that thing off the bottom, and then you just let your line slack. So what that's doing is you have your bait at the top and your weight at the bottom. When you have tension in your line and you're dragging that bait, it's off the bottom. When you let your line slack and just lay down and wait a second, what that bait's doing is it's falling right to the bottom, it's laying on the bottom. So then you pull your line tight again and drag the bait and it's off the bottom, then you give it a pause and it falls down. That is a very, very, very productive way when, when the fish are really lethargic and they're not really eating. You know, they're really, it's really tough. Like you're on a tough day, you really can't get that many bites and that is one way that you know you can really catch them. Another way when it's really tough is simply throwing that drop shot out there. Boom. Letting it hit the bottom. And what you're gonna do is get slack in your, or not, no slack in your line. Get tension in your line and just kind of hold it there. All right, and you're just gonna barely wiggle your bait. And then you're just gonna let it sit. And I mean, you're gonna let this thing sit for, se I mean, you're pretty much dead sticking this bait, but you're just giving it little tiny, you know, wiggles just like that. So it's just giving the bait a little bit of motion, keeping that thing off the bottom. And that can be a very productive way. Cause you're not just bouncing this thing all over the place. You know, you're still keeping it really, 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 woo, really, really subtle. Golly, man. You're still keeping this thing really, really subtle, but you're giving it a little bit of movement just in case the fish is kind of looking at it and he's wondering, you know, what's going on. You give it that little sporadic movement, just that little wiggle, and then the fish engulfs it. So when the fish are a little bit more active, you know, they're starting to chomp. This is, you know, just the basic way that I work a drop shot is pretty much throw it out there and just bounce this thing off the bottom. You know, slight motion in your rod. I'm not, you know, going crazy with it, but I'm just kind of, you know, bouncing that thing along the bottom and I'm working it back to me. Just like I would a shaky head, a jig, um, any bottom bait really, mainly a shaky head. That's pretty much just how I'm working it. I'm just working it back to me. I'm covering water. I'm able to throw this thing in a lot of different spots just because I'm not keeping this thing still as long. Therefore, I'm gonna be able to make a lot more cast. So that is probably the basic way to work a drop shot. So that's what you can experiment around with right when you first get out there is covering water, really figuring out what those fish want. And then once you know, you notice the fishes aren't biting, that's when you slow down to dead sticking it or just barely moving that bait or dragging it on the bottom. And then the last way that I'm gonna show you guys is simply throwing it out there and just working it back pretty fast, pretty aggressive, you know, wiggling your rod a lot, really making that bait move, just really overall working it faster than you normally would. And that's gonna work on those days where those fish are just chomping. You know, those fish are just active, they're ready to eat, they're hungry, and they don't really care. You know, <laughs> they're just gonna bite whatever's really in front of them. That is when I would do that. And obviously this is for casting a drop shot out and obviously I'm at a pond right now. So like when I'm on a lake, like if I'm dropping down on a fish, I'm gonna work it a lot different than when I'm casting out at these ponds and other places. You know, I'm probably gonna drop it down and just slightly wiggle the rod or just drop it in front of one's face and bring it in front of them. And I'm kind of watching the fish on the graph. That's totally different. But this is more for when I'm casting a drop shot out and using it as many places as I can and swishing up the technique. So those are like four different ways that I would really stick to when throwing a drop shot to get more bites. If you notice that fish aren't biting the bait, like you're just not, you've tried everything, you've tried dead sticking, you've tried moving around, the best option from there is to switch colors. So you're gonna switch colors from, you know, a June bug to a green pumpkin. And that might just be that little kick right there that's gonna allow you to catch more fish. And I've seen it happen on a day-to-day -day basis. And I actually see it on my graph when I drop down on fish, they won't eat a pink worm. But then I put a green one on and they gobble it up every time. So just a simple little adjustments like that can really help you catch more. And another thing is not only just switching the color, say that it doesn't work and you're just not getting bites on a worm, all right? And then you have to pretty much, <laughs> What the world, man. Guys, I'm having the roughest time today. Today's has not been the best day for me. Instead of throwing a worm, you want to throw like a little shad profile minnow. And that's always great. That's always good to rig on a drop shot, especially if you're vertically dropping on a fish. But those are all just little easy tips that I use on a day-to-day basis when throwing a drop shot that really helps me figure the fish out and catch more 
and catch a ton more if you figure out really what they're wanting to eat that time of day. All right, everybody, that is going to conclude this video. I didn't catch any more fish and I've just had a rough day today, guys, and I'm it's about to get dark and I just really need to get out of here. I really appreciate everybody and all the support and love every single day on the channel. Really means a lot. If you guys wanna see some more tip videos, be sure to leave a comment below in the comment section. If you guys have not subscribed to the channel, channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, pepper that like button up if you guys haven't already. And let me know what tip videos you wanna see next. I really want you guys to do that, so leave a comment below. Thank you guys so much for the support. I love you guys so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Beat it up, beat it up. Keep it up, keep it up. They gon' try you, they can't stop you. Eat it up, eat it up. Pac-Man, Pac-Man. Pac-Man, Pac-Man.